What's going on everyone? Gilman with Live Wealthy Stocks back with our daily Apple update video where we take a look at how Apple stock traded today, key levels of support and resistance that we are looking at moving into the future and based on that what we think Apple stock could do. So real quick if you enjoy videos like this don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. So let me go ahead and hit record and we will get right into it. Not a great day for Apple, actually not a great day for a lot of uh, big tech stocks, right? Just as we were starting to see a nice move up, um, we got a little bit of a pullback. Um, so let's take a look at how Apple traded today. We'll take a look at some reasons why um, it was down and the overall market was a little bit down. Then we'll do our usual support and resistance. And based on that, what we think, you know, it could be headed into the future now. Right off the bat, right, we've seen a decent red day for Apple, $4.23 on the day, which is about 3.39%. Um, if we zoom into this chart here, um, you know, what we see is we're kind of back where we were um, at the beginning of this week, right? When we started to push up, our low point was $120.42. That's when we set the high of 124. Um, and we're pretty much back there, right? We gave up the progress for the week. So that's not great news. Um, the NASDAQ today was actually down 3%, right? So when you take a look at that, it puts things into perspective. NASDAQ being down 3% is a pretty big deal. Um, and it also goes to show you that, you know, it's not just Apple, it's the overall, you know, tech sector and, and a lot of a lot of stocks within the indice, indices um, were down. Dow Jones was down 141 points. And then let me hit the S&P 500 here. Um, we were down there as well. Okay, sorry about that, here we are. Yeah, so the NASDAQ was down about a percent and a half as well, but the NASDAQ being down 3% is kind of the main thing to look at. And you know, compared to that, Apple was, was kind of in line with, um, you know, the, the overall weakness that we saw in the tech sector. So why is this happening? Well, there's, there's two things that I wanna kind of look at um, to kind of, you know, share why I think, um, you know, we're seeing this. The first one being, um, we've seen this kind of over and over again in the past couple of weeks, um, yields are spiking, right? It's becoming more and more rewarding to put money in the bond market as, the, as investors are getting higher yields, which means a lot of money could be flowing from big tech, other stocks into the bond market, right? As the yields go up. So the 10 year uh, treasury bond shop of the 1.7 mark, um, which as a result has been battering growth stocks with tech in particular suffering exactly what we saw in the indices, right? NASDAQ down 3%, um, you know, S&P and Dow Jones still down, but definitely not as beaten up as the NASDAQ. So that's what we're looking at guys. So Wednesday, you guys remember yesterday, the Fed announced that they're holding interest rates steady, led to that hike we saw at the end of the day. Um, but clearly, you know, with the, 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 um, the yield rising, um, we are seeing a little bit of, of a pullback again. And the other thing that I want to talk about real quick is what's called uh, as quadruple witching, which is you know, quad witching. Um, and that is a date where the stock index futures, stock index options, stock options, and sing single stock futures expire simultaneously. So you guys know, you know, every Friday, typically on most stocks, right? You could buy weekly call options, put options. And then there's the monthly, which is typically the third Friday of every month. Well, quad witching is when all four of these expire on the same day. Now, what does that mean? That means that there is a lot of money on the line tomorrow with all these expiring contracts. What does that mean? That means typically, from my experience, markets can be very up and down, um, and it's really, really hard to predict which way the market is going. I've seen crazy swings happen, um, and if you if you wanna look more of this stuff, you could look up Theory of Max Payne, um, that's literally Max and then P-A-I-N, Payne, not you know any fancy dude, it's just Theory of Max Payne, um, and ultimately, right, where big money wants the market to go. If someone has a lot of contracts expiring for a certain price, big money will try to push the market in a certain direction. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Typically, quad witching is a day where I try to not day trade just because I have no idea what's gonna happen. 
the market could be going one way, take a dip, go the other way. Market could be going down last 10 minutes, it could start to head up. Um, literally last 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, right? So that's why quad witching is something that can definitely, you know, be be a little weird to trade in. So if you are trading tomorrow, uh, be careful of that. Not to say sell all your positions. No, just it's just if you're day trading, you're looking for shorter term swings, right? Be on the lookout. Just my goal is to make you guys aware and then we can hopefully, you know, all make our own educated decisions. So let's take a look at the one day chart for Apple. Um, as we know, it's not super pretty, uh, but what we'll see and, you know, maybe we get an indication of, you know, how it traded today. So let me get rid of these indicators here and then also put the drawings back on for us. So you guys see here that, you know, we were in the 125s, um, closed right below it, pushing up in the after hours. And then we had a decent gap down right from the 124s to the 123s, broke below it in the pre-market. And then we, you know, went down, kind of bounced off this 121.50 level and then hung out here. And, you know, I thought that was it for the day, but then we saw a kind of second part to that fall. Um, after this view app rejection, we broke below this 121.48. As you can see, right, made a quick attempt to come right back in here, but failed and then pushed into the close. So overall, very weak day. Um, rising yields have been kind of annoying to, to deal with. You could see, I'm gonna get rid of this line because that's the line we were hoping to follow. Actually, no, I'll leave it for a couple days. Maybe we get back above that. Um, but now let's talk future levels of support, future levels of resistance. So the first level we have obviously in support wise is that 120 level, um, just a mental resistance. And then if we don't break that, 119.09 is a pretty good example, right? You go back to 312, you go back to 309, you go back to some of these days, uh, early March. Um, good bounce off that 119.09 level. If that doesn't hold, we've got 116.40, which is the absolute lowest we went throughout this whole pullback. Um, so that's what we have coming up. If we break 120s, 119 and then 116, um, on the push up, we've got 121.50, the level that we broke below today. 123.69, the level that we broke below today in the pre-market with the gap down and the push down. And then 126.60 is a level that I thought, um, or the, the level that we were at just a couple days ago. Now, what's crazy is I sold a 127.50 covered call earlier this week. I sold it on Monday. And the next day we actually went up in the 127s and I kind of got scared. I was like, oh no, my shares are gonna be called away. I was looking at rolling my call out another week and up and out. So maybe like next week to the 128, 129 level. And now we're at the point where my covered call that I sold is pretty much worthless. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I still lost more money. I, I made, I think 60, 70 bucks on that covered call which is what I've been doing for Apple as it does nothing for the past couple of weeks. I've been selling a covered call uh, pretty conservatively and, and making kind of 60, 70, $80, depending on kind of what strike I want to sell at. But what I have to understand is, you know, if to sell a covered call, you either need those synthetic, uh, either a covered, or if, if to sell a covered call, you either need a long call or you need a hundred shares now. 100 shares going from 126 to 120 is a $600 loss. And my covered call uh, only gives me 60, 70 bucks. So I did still lose out overall, but that's 60, 70 bucks that I made that I couldn't have made if I just had my shares, right? So covered calls, if you haven't looked into it, great strategy to kind of make some money um, as the stock sits around and does nothing, or it's a great way to make money as, you know, uh, the market goes up and then down. Um, that's what I'm looking at again, continuing to hold my shares. Uh, I do have a long call going out to July. That's, you know, decently down probably 35, 40%. The reason I keep it is because it's going out to July. I bought myself some time, so I'm going to keep it for now. Um, and again, tomorrow might get a little weird. I'm just, I, I would like to say that we're going to push up break and bake the 121s and then make a push out 123.69. That would, that's what I want but understanding that it's Friday, meaning we typically see some some level of a sell-off, Friday fade. We have seen green Fridays, but typically, um, I'm sure some of you guys can relate, we don't see a, a green Friday. Um, we also don't typically see green, or we don't see as red of a Thursday, so hey, maybe we see a reversal tomorrow. So I would like to see us break above the 121.48, make a push towards 123.69, but ultimately, 
we have to understand a lot of money's on the line tomorrow. Quad witching is happening. And so, you know, whatever market makers want will happen. We've got our levels to see where we go. Hopefully it's between 121.48 and 123.69. And I can be, you know, I can talk about the green day we have in tomorrow's video. But as always, I'll keep you guys posted. So that's all I had today. Another quick update was that, you know, um, their class counsel in Apple is throttling case. Um, $81 million in fees. That's not something that I think was the reason for the mover today. So I'm not, I didn't cover it in too much detail, um, but that is something that's happening as well. So as always, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new and comment down below what your thoughts on Apple are. And I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day and until next time.